Hello, you're welcome. Uh, we continue with the solution to the exercise we've been looking at on completely randomized design. In the last video, we did some computations. We computed what we call the correction factor, the total sum of squares, the treatment sum of squares, and the error sum of squares. So all those things were computed. And I told us in that last video that all the other computations we need to do will be done in the ANOVA table. So here on the board is what the ANOVA table is. It has rows and columns. So the first column there is the source of variation. And uh, permit me to use different colors for this so that you can understand yeah so here the first thing you have on that source of variation is treatments because in completely randomized design as i explained in previous video we have only one source of variation and from the data we have the layout the only source of variation is variation due to the treatments. So you have treatments there. And the next thing you have, of course, is the experimental error. And then, of course, the total. Now, for this table, the next column is degrees of freedom column. And for the degrees of freedom, we normally fill it up this way. For treatments, the degree of freedom is T minus 1. Recall that in the last video, we said T is the number of treatments. So in this example, we have three treatments, A, B, and C. Three. So our degrees of freedom will be 3 minus 1. So it will be 3 minus 1, and that will be 2. Now, error for error, before you compute it, you have to get that of total. If you recall that when we were computing the sum of squares in the last video, we computed the values for sum of squares for total and treatment before we could get error. So the same thing for degrees of freedom, we have to compute degrees of freedom for treatment and total before we then get error. Now, for total, it is simply n minus 1. And what is n? n is the total number of observations in the data, which we call RT here because we have the same number of observations for each treatment. So it's the same thing as RT minus 1. And that is what? 15 minus 1, which is equal to 14. So the degrees of freedom, n minus 1, or rt minus 1, they, say they, they mean the same thing. That's 15 minus 1 in this example, giving us 14. Now, since you have this, it's easy to get this. Now, we just subtract. So for error, to get it, it is the degrees of freedom for total, minus the degrees of freedom for treatment. In other words, we say it is simply RT minus 1 minus T minus 1. But you see, you don't need to bother yourself trying to solve that. You already have 14 here, you already have 2 there. So that's simply what? 14 minus 2. And that's 12. Very easy to do. Now, you have got that. The next thing is sum of squares. In the last video, we computed the sum of squares. So all you need to do is, the values you got from, that from those computations, you just bring them here. So here, we said, for here, we got 617.50. If you recall, from the last calculation we did. And... We got 627.49, and here we got 9.99. 9 
9.99 from previous computations. So in case you didn't watch that last video, you have to go back to it so that you understand how we computed all these values. Once you have that, the next column on your, in your ANOVA table is what we call mean squares, abbreviated as MS, mean squares. Now, mean squares are very straightforward to compute. They are simply the sum of squares divided by the corresponding degrees of freedom. So, for here, it will be SS treatments divided by DF for treatments. So, will be so it will be 617.50 divided by 2. So that's how we calculate mean squares in ANOVA table. It's always it's a standard procedure. Mean squares are SS divided by uh, DF. Similarly for error, it is SS for error divided by DF for error. That is 9.99 divided by 12. So that's what we have in this. So when you evaluate this, it gives you 308.75. That's what this gives you. That's the first one there. And the second one will give you 0.8, 0.83. That's what this one gives you. Now, now that you have that, the next, now you wonder, how about this? We don't compute anything here. We leave it blank. No computation. So, no computation of MS for total. Why is that so? It is so because Mean squares are not additive. Please note that in the ANOVA table, mean squares are not additive. If you want to check that, you can easily find it out. For example, you know, we said this divided by this gives us this. This divided by this gives us this. And we know that this plus this gives us this, right? Now, if you go ahead and divide this by 14, that's this SS total by 14. And you put the value here. You will realize that the value you will put here will not be the addition of this and this. So we say mean squares are not additive. So because of that, you don't compute MS for total at all. You leave that place blank. No computation there. So your next item on, in that table is this column called variance ratio. And variance ratio refers to your F calculated. That's the way we abbreviate it, F calculated. And this is simply obtained as our mean square for treatments divided by our mean square for error. So, mean squares for treatments divided by mean squares for error. That means this value, 308.75, will be divided by 0.83. So, that is what we give you that. And because treatment is the only source of variation here, it is the only item for which we will compute F calculated. We don't compute F calculated for error because that's not a source of variation. The recognized source of variation in this uh, exercise is variation due to treatments. And that's the only one for which we will compute uh, variance ratio. And this will be equal to 371.99 if you divide that out. 
you get 371.99. So that is the answer there. But that's not the end of your computation. You will still add this value here, which is the critical value for F. We abbreviate it as F tab or F tabulated. How do you obtain this? You go to the statistical table. So it is the statistical table that will give you this value. Now, statistical table, normally we have uh, discussed the issue in previous videos. We have discussed the issue of level of significance. That's usually in agriculture and most life sciences, we talk of either 0 0.05 level of significance or alpha level of 0 0.01 level of significance. So any of the but the commonest one we normally use in agriculture and related disciplines is 0 0.05. So we'll look at this value at alpha equals 0 0.05. That's level of significance. I, uh, I, I, I have explained a little more about this in previous video. Now, how do we obtain that? You go to the table, the table has items, I mean, values, columns, and rows. Now, the degrees of freedom for treatment is 2, degrees of freedom for error is 12. So, those are the two things you need when you are looking up for the F tabulated value. So, what you do is that in the table, you look for row, I mean, sorry, you look for column 2. Because the table is in rows and columns. So look for column 2. Trace it down till you get to row 12. So you, that's the way you do it. So you start from column 2. Trace it down until you get to row 12. Row 1, row 2, row 3, and so on till you get to 12. So whatever value you have there is your F tabulated. And in this exercise... It is 3.89. So, having obtained our 3.89 as the F tabulated, we need to now compare it with this value of F calculated to be able to take our decision. And from previous video on testing of hypothesis, we have this rule, rule for testing hypothesis. If calculated value is greater than tabulated value, reject null hypothesis. On the other hand, if calculated value is less than the tabulated value, accept the null hypothesis. So, the particular scenario that applies in our own case here, where the calculated value is greater than the tabulated value, is this first one here. And therefore, we reject HO. So, from the previous video, you know, we stated the hypothesis this way, that our HO says there is no significant difference between the treatment, while the alternative says the exact opposite. So, in this analysis now, it is very clear that since our F calculated is greater than F tabulated, we reject the null hypothesis and that that means our conclusion is that therefore we conclude that there is therefore there is a significant difference there is a significant difference between the treatments between the treatments so that's our final conclusion and that concludes the analysis of that exercise now how about the situation where the treatments don't have the same number of replicates or the same number of observations that is an example we'll look at in the next video see you then thank you for stopping by bye